Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, good day all. Today uh, we are going to look at the cell cycle. And if this is the first time you are coming to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. And of course, this PowerPoint is not made by me. I got it from internet. So I'm now going to look at the cell cycle. So, but the first thing that we need to understand is why do, why do cells divide? Because naturally in our body, we have what you call cells because cells, as we know, is a fundamental and the functional unit of life. So generally, cells are divided in our body in order to maintain a lot of physiological processes. Like, for example, generally in the body, we have a situation where there is an accident. And as a result of that accident, some cells are damaged. And apart from damage of the cells, some cells also aged. They become very old as we survive with time. So those old cells, they need to be replaced. They need to be replaced because if, you did, if the cells are not replaced, there is what we call wearing and tearing of the cells which may actually lead to a lot of disease complications. So the old cells must be replaced. The damaged cells must also be replaced. And sometimes cells may die. So there are dead cells. So if cells are dead, how do you replace them? And some of these cells in our body, they have specific lifespan. They have specific lifespan that after some days or some months, some cells will die. So, but you need to replace them. And the process in which cells are programmed to date at some particular or at some specific period of time is what you call apoptosis. So, cells are dying, accident, some cells will damage, and some cells will become old. So, we have to replace them. So, that is why our cells divide. So cells are divided in order to replace the damaged cells, the old cells, and the dead cells. That is one of the major reasons why cells have to divide. So cells are divided in order to one, one in order to replace, in order to replace, in order to replace old damage and dead cells. This is one of the major reasons that a cells must divide to replace old damage and dead cells. And another reason why cells must be divided is growth and development. Growth and development. Why do you grow? Because we were born as a baby, but we are growing with time and we are developing at the same time. Because the exact number of cells that you were born with are not exactly the same with the number of cells that you have currently if you now look at your life. So if there is such situations, what is the answer to the questions? That the cells some or most of the cells in the body are grow or most of the organs and tissues in the body are grow due to increase in a number of cells due to increase due to increase in a number to increase in a number of cells and how this number of cells increase is true the division of the cells. But at the same time, the growing of a particular human being or living organisms, an organ or tissue is not actually sometimes not depend on the increase in the number of cells. Sometimes there is an enlargement of the cell. Enlargement. There is what they call enlargement of the cells. That is the cells will increase in size. The cells will increase in size. So this is actually two major reasons why we grow due to increase in the number of cells or enlargement of the cell. 
but the increase in the number of cells is due to the division of the cells. One cell divided into two and two divided into four and four divided into 20. And as I said, cells are replaced the old damage and the dead cells because some cells have background. So that is why if we have a dead cells, or if cells are dead, then we have to replace them. Like for example, it has been known that it has been well known that in one minute, 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 one or a liver cell, sorry, not liver cell, in one minute, about 30,000 to 40,000. 40,000 cells are dying from skin. So about 30,000 to 40,000 cells are dying in the skin, from the skin in one minute from skin. About 30,000 to 40,000 are dying every minute from the skin. And it has been estimated about 50 million, about 50 million of skin cells are dying in a day. So how do we replace them? It's through the division of the cells. So the cells must divide and reduce more so that at least those cells will be replaced. And nearly it has been estimated because it's not only uh, skin cells, there are so many cells that are dying. It has been estimated that about 2 trillion cells, about 2 trillion cells are dividing every day. 2 trillion cells is not a small number, 2 trillion cells. Two trillion cells are dividing in Eddie. But someone will ask these questions. If two trillion cells are dying in Eddie, if two trillion cells are dying in Eddie, so now the question is how many cells are found in human being? Like, for example, because this thing that we are talking about is actually in reference to human being. So if two trillion cells are dividing every day in a human cell, so how many cells are there in human cells? Of course, in average human being, there are about 37.2 trillion cells. There are about 37.2 trillion cells. These are the number of cells that are found in humans. So the major reasons why our cells divide is actually to replace the old damage and dead cells and also for growth and development. So the major reasons why we Bad cells is of course due to growth and division of a cell. Growth and also it's not uh, growth alone, there is also a repair. Because sometimes our cell damage, so if the cell is damaged, then they need to be repaired. So the repairment requires the division of the cell. And of course, the cells also divide in order for them to get enough food, water and then remove the waste in and out of our bodies quickly. So now, what is a cell cycle? A cell cycle is a series of events that take place from one cell division to the next cell division. Because when we said a cell cycle, like for example, as we are saying in a cellular division, if you now have one cell, so one cell, which is this one, would be considered as a parent cell, as a parent cell. So these parent cells will now divide itself into two. So one cell divides into two, then the process called mitosis. So you have the parent cell and you have the daughter cell. So in the mitosis, parent cells and the daughter cells are exactly the same. They have the same genetic material, same genetic makeup. And also, these daughter cells also divide itself further into another cell. So you see this from here to here is called a cell cycle. This is a cell cycle from here to here. This is a cell from one parent cell to two cells. So we call it uh, a cell cycle. And of course, from here, the daughter cell also further divide and the parents are also continue dividing. So the series of events that is taking place from one cell cycle to the next cell cycle. This is one cell cycle, and this is another cell cycle. If this one also divides to produce another, then this is the third cell cycle. 
So the series of events that take place from one cell cycle to the next is what you call cell cycle. That is what you call cell cycle. And this cell cycle is constantly repeated because if one cell cycle happens, then another one will happen is constantly it will be repeated until the required number of cells are being produced. So that is why as we are surviving, of course, although we sometimes we reach some stage of life that our cells not longer be divided. It's because we aged. Because as we aged, even the number of the cell cycle is the reason. So we we'll reach a stage where the cell cycle will stop. And that is when we start aging. Because at that stage, all cells are not replacing. And that is why we aged. So if you reach a stage where the cell cycle are not taking place in your body, it means that there is no cell division. And if there is no cell division, that tells you that your old cell will not be replaced. And as a result of that, the old cells will undergo wearing and tearing. And that is aging. So for more information, you can go and read on biochemical gerontology, that is each and aging processes. You will see how cell cycles play a vital role in aging. So what are the three stages of cell cycle? We have three stages of the cell cycle. And these three stages of cell cycle include interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. But sometimes this mitotic phase, you can just see it as M phase because it's not only mitosis as a cell division. So the M phase can be mitosis or meiotic. So now we are starting with the interface. What is interface? The interface is one of the stage of cell cycle where is where is considered as a period of growth and development. That is, of course, you have a cell. So after you have a cell, then before the cell on the other cell cycle, the cell will first grow and then it will now that it will develop. So the growth and the development of the dividing cells is taking place at the interface. And it is the longest phase of the cell cycle. It is considered as the longest phase of the cell cycle. And some cycles, some cells never leave interface, such as nerve and muscle cells. So nerve cells and muscle cells, they are the cells that they never divide. Like brain cells, if the brain cells is growing, it's not actually based on the increase in a number of cells. It's based on enlargement. So the cells are enlarging, they grow, and then no division. And such cells are nerve cells and muscle cells, including the cardiac cells. So these are the kinds of cells that they do not actually divide. The number of the number of the brains and the muscle cells you have are exactly the same with the one that you have on because they are not divided. So then the next thing is the three things that happen during interface. What are the three things that happen during interface? Cell growth in size. So the cells will grow inside and makes an extra set of structures. It makes an extra set of structures that will make the cells to fully farm for the cellular division. Either mitosis or meiosis. So cell makes a copy of it is hereditary material, that is the DNA. So if you have a cell, so the dividing size is actually uh, copying another molecule of DNA. So cell makes a copy of it is hereditary material. All this is taking place at the interface. So the cell growth is taking place at the interface. And then at the same time, the cell also copy it is hereditary material, which is DNA. And it also produces the structures that are needed for the mission. And these structures include spindle fibers and centrioles. So spindle fibers and centrioles are produced in the interface. And these are some of the structures that are needed. It's like the raw material that are needed in cellular division. So this is actually the structure of the states. 
So the next thing is, of course, DNA, because we said that at the interface, DNA divide itself. Sorry, uh, interface produce a copy of DNA. So what is a DNA? So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and is usually found in the nucleus. Although the DNA is not only found in the nucleus, we can also have DNA in the chloroplast mitochondria. We can find them there. So the chrome, the DNA is it, it, it is our hereditary material, so it passed on from our parent. So that means the DNA you have is coming from your parents. Like, for example, we have maternal DNA and paternal DNA. There is a DNA that is coming from the mother and the DNA that is coming from the father. So the combination of DNA from the father and the mother is what actually gives us our own DNA. That is where we get some characters from our parent and also some characters from our mother. Because the hereditary material, which is the DNA, is the dictator and the language of life. Because the way you are, you are beautiful, you are, you have black color, you have fair color, you are intelligent all because of your DNA. It means that if you want to see the character of your child, so look at his parent. You want to see the character of a child, so look at his parent, because the characters, the manners and the behaviors are coming from the DNA. So if we have the combination of this DNA, it means that the child is coming from, or is getting the half of the character from the father and half of the character from the father. And it's also found in the nucleus of our cells as chromatin. Although the DNA is not only found in the nucleus, there are also some organs of the cell that also contain the DNA. We have one of them, we have mitochondria. Mitochondria. So in the mitochondria, there is DNA. Then a from from the mitochondria, then in the chloroplast, chloroplast of plant cell, there is also a DNA. So all this is related to DNA. And then, The next thing is uh, apart from we have chromatin and chromosomes. So what are the difference between the two? The chromatin and the chromosomes. So a chromatin when we said a chromatin is unquiled DNA. So when you have unquiled DNA is what you call a chromatin. So generally DNA is very long, very, very long. It is very, very long. But because the DNA is usually quiet and so far quiet with what you call a histone portion, because in the DNA, sorry, in the chromosomes, as we said, we are not talking about chromatin and chromosomes. So in the chromosomes, that is what you call DNA. We have DNA and protein. So we have DNA and protein. So the proteins that are found in the chromosomes, we have histone protein, we have histone protein, and we also have non-histone protein. So generally, it's the histone protein that quiet and so far quiet. It's the histone protein that quiet and so far quiet the DNA and catch it. And that is why it's even fits into the nucleus of the cell. Because if you can take one molecule of the DNA, it is size and the length is even 100 times that of the cell itself, not top of the nucleus. But because the histone protein is tightly wrapped, the DNA, it wrapped it together, then it cages it pilot and super quality. That is why it perfectly fits into the nucleus. Because it has been known that if you can take the DNA of a human being and you stretch them end to end, it will give you like a six pits. Six pits. And six pits is a very huge fit. So if you can take the DNA. In fact, there were seeds that said if you can take the whole of the DNA of average human being, you stretch it end to end, it can actually reach from the surface of the earth up to the sky. So, but because histone protein packages it, pilots, 
and super quiet. That is why it is perfectly fitting today. Uh, this thing. So, but chromatin is an unquiet DNA, although even the chromatin is divided in the two. We have heterochromatin and euchromatin, and we'll also look at that as we are continuous with the lecture. So, chromosomes are tightly quiet strand of the DNA. And why is it tightly quiet strand of the DNA? It's because of the histone protein that tightly coil it. And of course, this is a chromosomes, and in the chromosomes, you should know that this is the DNA, although this is a wrong spelling, it is a DNA. And of course, whenever we talk about the DNA, in the DNA, there are genes in the DNA. There are genes. Let's say this is gene one, this is gene two, this is gene three, this is gene four, Continuous, like in human beings, there are like 25,000 of these genes. And each of these genes is responsible because from the DNA, the genes can be converted into what you call RNA. And of course, from the RNA, we generate, we generate protein. We generate protein. In the process when, the process where the DNA is converted into RNA or the gene from the DNA is converted into RNA is called transcription. It's called transcription. It's called transcription. Because from the DNA to, from RNA to protein is called translation. and the DNA and their agents. So it means that in a simpler way, what we are talking about is that if you have a cell, if you have a cell in the cells you have, if you have a cell, in the cells you have nucleus and in the nucleus you have chromosome. And of course in the chromosomes you have, this is the chromosome, and of course, in the chromosomes, you have histone protein. And this histone protein tightly found the DNA. And of course, in the DNA, there are genes. And these genes produce a protein. And whenever there is a protein, then there is a function. And the function can be structurally and can be physiological. Like for example, as we are talking about this, we have a protein like hemoglobin is responsible for the helping the oxygen to be transporting, sorry, it's helping the red blood cells to be transporting oxygen. And it's because of the hemoglobin. The neurotransmitter are proteins that are found in the plant, although some are affected, that helps in the in, in, in cognitive function. So chromatin is an unquiet DNA while chromosomes are tightly fucked strand of DNA. This is the difference. You see, if you look at the chromatin, you see that the DNA is just there in the nucleus, but there is no organization. But look at the chromosomes down here. So organization. And then the next thing is the structure of the chromosomes. How does it look like? So in the chromosomes, you have what you call chromatids, and you have telomere, we have centromere, we have matrix, in fact. We have what you call chromomere, and we also have chromomata. They are all fats of chromosomes. They are all found on the chromosomes. And we have centromere, which is the center of the chromosomes and we have telomere. The telomere is like a protective part of the DNA. It usually protects DNA. And if there is wearing and tearing of the telomere, probably there will be aging. And of course, now scientists are reversing aging because of the telomere technology. We'll come to that. I will have, I will get a video. I will actually do a video on telomere technology to see how we can repass each in them telomere technology. So, and then we have human karyotype, that is the karyotyping of the chromosomes. 
So we have a way of identifying chromosomes. We have a way of, apart from identifying the chromosomes, we also have a way of uh, identifying genes. So the process where we can identify agents in the chromosomes, we can identify the chromosome itself. We can even map the chromosome. This is what you can do with cryotyping. So this is the chromosomes. So like the chromosomes number varies across in the picture. So the number of chromosomes I have and the number of chromosomes other living organisms have are deeper and that is where we are different. It's hardly to see organisms to have the same chromosomes, even if they have the same chromosomes. But the identity, the, the number of genes as well as the arrangement of the genes and the nucleotide are not the same. And that is what make each and every species of living organism differ from one another. So like human, it, we humans have 46 chromosomes. Carrot has 18 chromosomes. Cat 32 chromosomes. Dog 78 chromosomes. Atworm 36. Fruit flight 8. Chimpanzee 48. And then Anders tongue farm. As 1,262 chromosomes. And the number of chromosomes doesn't actually reflect the compatibility of the living organisms. Like, for example, look at Dox is having 78. But human have 46. But in terms of complexity, we are more complex than the dogs. In fact, we have, we, we have, we do some functions that the dog doesn't do, although they are also doing some functions that our body also cannot do. But the functions, the nature, as well as the behavior of the human depend on the chromosomes. So this is how the chromosomes look like. So ladies and gentlemen, the next thing that we are going to look at is mitosis. Because as we are taking our cell division, we have two types of cell division. We have mitosis and meiosis. So we should try to get them here and understand. So. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus. Of course, in the mitosis, it results in two new identical nuclei. And it's usually found in either this mitosis usually takes place in a non-reproductive cell or during a sexual reproduction in prokaryotic organisms. Like, for example, binary fusion. Binary fusion is a mitosis. And it usually takes place in prokaryotic organisms. So now, I think before we go further, we need to understand the difference between the mitosis and meiosis. So mitosis, it occurs in somatic cells. So when you say somatic cells, it means non-reproductive cells. In humans, in human beings, we have like 220 different cell types. We have different cell types in our body, which are about 220. So it means that 218 cells are the somatic cells, and that is where mitosis takes place. When meiosis, it takes place in germ cell, that is reproductive cell. What are the reproductive cells? That is sperm cell and egg cell. So meiosis takes place in sperm and egg cell. And the mitosis also, the nucleus divide only once in mitosis. So one nucleus divide into two. But in a meiosis, the nucleus divides twice because generally in meiosis, it's one cell that divides into four. So one cell divides into four because in meiosis, in meiosis, there are two consecutive cellular divisions that are taking place. There are two consecutive cellular divisions that are taking place at the same time, at the same time. And that is why the meiosis is divided into two. You will see uh, the first one of the or the first stage of mitosis. You will see that you have chloroplast one, anaplast one, metaplast one. But of course, for the second phase, that is where you will see chloroplast two, anaplast two, metaplast two. Because it is two different, it's two consecutive cellular division that are taking place in the body. So that is why the nucleus is divided twice in meiosis. And mitosis have two daughter cells that are generally produced. But in meiosis, there are four daughter cells because two conjugative cellular divisions or two conjugative divisions of the cells are taking place. And then the daughter cells are deployed. Like, for example, 
since mitosis is taking place in the somatic cell so if one cell have photosis chromosomes and the cells divide itself then it will end up of having the daughter cell and the parent cells will only retain photosis chromosomes but in the case of meiosis the daughter cells are haploids are haploids because as we say it's in mitosis in mitosis they have what is used chromosomes at its return. But during meiosis, which usually takes place in the germinal cells, the daughter cells usually have the potassium chromosomes. But it is 23 that both the paternal and the maternal are donating. So it's when the 43, when the mother have 43 days so it's haploid so from the mother when the cells divide then it will now produce a haploid instead of 46 then you will have 26 23 chromosomes and also the father also will have 23 chromosomes and that is why it's haploid haploid usually n and diploid is 2 n so the mother and the father are having 23 23 so it's usually haploid So as a result of that, that is why it is haploid. Because you can clearly see that even from here, that this is the parent cells. These are the parent cells. And you can clearly see that from here, these parent cells, they have two, two chromosomes. But the, the end at the delta, the delta cells have only one, one chromosome. That is a haploid. And it occurs more frequently in mitosis and less frequently in the case of meiosis. And the delta cells form somatic organs. So the delta cells usually form somatic organs. The somatic organs is like the brain cells, liver cells, kidney cells. But in the case of the meiosis, the delta cells usually form gametes. That is called zygote. So the swarm cell and egg cells, when they undergo the immune system, they will subsequently form gamete, which is a zygote cells. And then there is only one propase, one metapase, one anapase, and one telopase. But there are two of each piece and five subtypes in propase one. Like that is why I said because it is two consecutive cellular division that is taking place in meiosis at the same time. So that's why each of the four pairs, like four pairs one and four pairs two, and pairs one and two, meta pairs one and two, and tele pairs one and two in the case of meiosis. And in the case of the uh, meiosis, it's also subdivided into five, which include liptotin, zygotin, pachytin, and liptotin. We will look at that in the next video, not in this video. And then the number of chromosomes are not changed in the cells, but the number of chromosomes are reduced to half. And then the chromosomes number doubles at the beginning of each cellular division. While in the case of meiosis, the chromosomes number is not doubled. It doubles after the end of first meiotic division. And there is no crossing over in chromosomes in the case of meiosis. While there is a crossing over in chromosomes. And then there is equation division and here there is no, there is a reduction division. So that is the difference between the two. So now let's just go to play and look at the mitosis. So there are four stages of mitosis, which include propase, metapase, anapase, and telopase. So in the propase, the chromosomes are there, condensed, and the nuclear envelope is not apparent. So the chromosomes they are there, condensed, they condense themselves. The nuclear envelope is not apparent. It's not apparent in the So in this case, the chromatin condensed to form a chromosome. So at this stage, the chromatin, remember I would say the chromatin is actually on quality and so it at, it's at the stage of focus that the chromosome the chromatin will now condense itself 
quan itself to form the chromosome. And then the centrioles, the centrioles will move to the end of the cells. And of course, this is the centrioles. You can clearly see it. This is the centrioles. You can see that this is the central and you can see that it actually moves to the opposite to the opposite end of the cell. Then the spindle fibers form bridge between the end of the cells. So this is what actually happened in the progress. And of course, the nuclear in the, the nuclear envelope breaks down. Look at it. This is the nuclear envelope. So you can see it clearly here it breaks. Here it also breaks throughout X. So this is what actually happened at the stage of progress. So when the white progress came into your mind, the first thing you should know that is a chromatin and it condenses itself into a chromosome. And of course, the centile usually move to the opposite end of the cell. And then the spindle fibers from this. The nuclear envelope also breaks down. So this is the most important thing that you shouldn't forget in the case of progress. So this is typical structure or microscopic structure of these things. And then the next one is metaphase. So what happened at the stage of metaphase? So at this stage of metaphase, the chromosomes line off in the center of the cell attaching to spinal fibers by the sun on there. So the chromosomes will now align off at the center of the cell by attaching the fibers. The fibers of the chromosome will now attach to the centromia. So this is it. So this is the chromosomes. If you can clearly see this is the chromosomes. And we have the spindle fibers that attach the centromere of the chromosomes. So this is how it is. This is even the structure. You can clearly see this is the microscopy. So the, all this is the microscopic structure, just to show you exactly what is happening. This is the cell, of course, this is the chromosomes. They are like at this point. Attached by the spindle fibers. And then the next thing is anapes. So anapes is the central mass. The central mass is split. So the central mass would be divided. And then chromatid also separate and become a chromosome. Then the new chromosomes move to opposite end of the cell. And then the cell begins to stretch out at the end so that the fish itself are fat. This is what happened. Look at it. The central mass separates because initially the spindle fibers are tied to central so it will now start separating them. So this is the most important thing that we should need to understand that at the metaphase or from the fourth phase there's the spindle fibers and the spindle fibers they are there they move themselves at the opposite end of the cell and then the spindle fibers in the case of metaphase now attach to the central mirror of the chromosome. And after it attaches itself to the central mirror of the chromosomes, and then at the next phase, the anaphase will now split the central mirror. And then the chromatis, which then later become chromosome. And the new chromosomes move to the opposite end of the cell. And then the cell begins stretch out at the end. So that it can now hook itself to the right. So this is actually this is actually the structure. And then the next one is the toilet press. Then the chromosomes stretch out, new nuclear envelope forms around each region of the chromosomes. Look at this actually because the cell is actually at the two end and to the right. Then the next stage of phases, the next, the next, the last stage of the cell cycle is cytochromosis that the cell membrane pinch in around the middle of the cell. The cell split into two. Then each total cell end up with an identical set of chromosomes and half of the organelles. So that is what happens. So you have the two cells here. So if you look at them, they are the same. 
and the division of the cytoplasm also takes place here and usually start around the same time as telopause. So this result in two the identical cells, the daughter cells that have the same number of chromosomes as the original parent cell. So cytokinesis in animal cell. So cell membrane pinches together around the middle of the cell and creates a two new cell. Then each two tassels get about the half of the organelles. So this is what happened in the cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is just the synthesis or the generation of the cells. So, and then the cytokinesis in plant cells, the cell platforms down the center of the cell and then the cell plat gradually develops into the membrane and then the new walls form around the cell membrane. This is what happened, the cytokinesis. So there is some implements. These are the pieces and this is actually a summary of what actually happened in the uh, mitosis. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the end for the video lectures and if this is the first time you are coming to YouTube channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much. We'll meet in the next video.